Hey, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm David Riggleman, Communications Director for the City of Las Vegas. Coming up on this show, donations pour in for those in need as holiday cheer is spread throughout Ward 2. And find out why one amazing 12-year-old girl has been named America's National Miss Queen in action. It's pretty exciting stuff. Of course, the councilwoman who represents Ward 2 is Victoria Seaman. She joins me now. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. It's good to be back. Good to be back. And 2021. Our first show is yeah, 2021. 2021. How about that? I'm excited. 2020 is in the rear view. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. So, how's your new year been treating you so far? Very good. Yeah, good, good, Very good, good. good. Excited to be here. Excited to be at work and helping the community and hoping for a better year than last exactly. year. Exactly. Just as busy as last year around here, oh, that's yeah. for sure. That so, doesn't change. You know Ward 2 very well. It's where we both live. Yes. Uh, for those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 2 is located, well, hey, come join us sometime out there. It's basically the area with the big two on it, appropriately enough. We're basically west of the Rainbow Curve, primarily. Right. So if you live right. west of that area, then chances are you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. You are in Ward 2 if you're a resident out there and you are represented by Victoria Seaman. We've said this before, that area west of the 215 exploding with growth it out is. there. It is. Um, but it's a wonderful part of town, a lot going on in the ward. And, um, you know, we're going to talk more about it today. That's what we're here to do. So, Councilwoman, one of the things that you are well known for is a big animal lover and supporter of animals. You recently took a tour of the Animal Foundation because they had some specials going on during the holidays to try to encourage people to find a forever pet uh, to bring into their home. That's correct. They really had some and need. it took everything I had not to bring them all home. <laughs> I, I thought about that. <laughs> you already have two dogs, right? I have three. Three dogs. Have okay. Three. Yeah, there you go. So, it was really hard because there are so many wonderful pets just waiting for a home. There was one, that, that little uh, cat right there, it just didn't want me to go. It Aww. just kept grabbing my hand. So uh, just for those folks who really want a pet, this is the best place to go and adopt yeah. an animal that needs a home. The, you know, the old thing is, yeah, don't shop, adopt, right? Yes. Because there yes. are a lot of animals in need. And, and the shelter tries to do their very best not to put any of the animals down, but at some point the population, and this is really speaks not yeah. so much to the shelter, but to those of us that live in Las Vegas, we've got to do a better job of getting our animals spayed and neutered so that they're not overpopulated. Right, and, and they have some great programs there where they do. will spade your dog. Um, uh, they um, offer so many different services for the community. Exactly. I really was impressed when I toured it. Yeah, I know you were a big uh, big help to try to get the word out too on social media about, hey, there are animals that are available for adoption. Uh, really consider it, um, some beautiful animals. I have a rescue, we have two rescues in fact. I have a dog, one too. Dog and a cat, so. And it's uh, my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can find some really, really great, great uh, for animals, babies there, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, good for you for helping get the word out uh, to Chris Robinson and the crew over at the Animal Foundation. And then Councilman, uh, we are into 2021, but uh, we wanna talk a little bit about some of the holiday stuff that just took place here within the last few weeks. You posted this on Facebook. You said, thank you to everyone who turned out for the Ward 2 holiday celebration. It was so great to see so many wonderful people and spread a little holiday cheer. And we needed holiday cheer after 2020 in the year sure as it did. unfolded. So tell everybody, that, that where, where are we, Councilman? Where, where is this taking place? We're at Bruce Tramp Bruce Park. Tramp. And we were supposed to have a Christmas breakfast. And because of the pandemic, we decided to do a little to-go breakfast ah. with some gifts in it. And people really loved it and brought their kids. We had we had gifts for the kids and gifts for the adults and, and breakfast, basically. So it was uh, really a nice event. And but good for you guys. You know, obviously it. different than how we would have done it uh, had it not been a pandemic. <laughs> but it's still, you know, we're all used to that now. Yeah, it's just the way are. we've had to change the way we think and do. And, and there you are, still helping uh, spread some cheer at the holidays. Looks like you had a great turnout at we that. We did have a great turnout, it was great. Your staff, they do a great job of helping organize all of that. And you even got Santa driving a Corvette there. Yeah, That's, we were yeah. surprised that Santa showed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's gonna be kind of right into that whole holiday thing, so. That was great. Well, so the event went off, again, not as we had mentioned it probably at the right. beginning of 2020, right. but. But we were able to just do a drive-through, yeah, and it worked right. out fine. 
And we've gotten really good at those at the city. Safe, yeah. where we have uh, given out things, Easter, whatever it might have been, where uh, everybody's social distance, they stay in their car. So we still get to have an event, but certainly much safer yes, than... because the kids look forward to they it. Sure they sure really do. do. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then, Councilwoman, you also helped uh, a lot of those in need uh, during the holidays. Uh, the holiday breakfast uh, drop-off took place uh, for Share Village, too, yes, right? Yes, my staff went over there and delivered... Uh, gifts and snacks over to Shared Village, which is always mm -hmm. in need of food and items. And so this was, I think it brought a lot of holiday cheer yeah. to some of the people that are in need. For and sure. there's Bree there, yeah, my, yeah, on my your staff, special yeah, assistant. Yeah, uh, and, Brandon Ramirez. Yeah. Councilman, uh, Shared Village, for those that don't know, it's Arnie Stock's group. Tell them what the organization's all about and, and who they basically care for. They really care for everyone, but they started out as a veterans village, mm -hmm. helping veterans right. in need of low-income housing, a place to stay, a place mm -hmm. to get on their feet, and it's just grown. And Arnie Stock is really a great partner with the city and all that he's done. And if you drive by the residences, it doesn't look like your average low-income housing. No, I mean, they, it looks like nice. neighborhoods and yeah. communities. And he also is, I think, one of the um, most well-known places to feed the homeless. Absolutely. And so he uh, is always available with water, with food. And so I encourage people, and I did throughout the pandemic, that if you have, um, if you want to give, uh, go to Shared Village and, and bring water or bring uh, food or donate to them because I think they've helped a lot of people yeah. through the pandemic and even before that. Mm -hmm. So oh, sure. it's a great organization. I'm very fond of what of Arnie Stock and what they do. Yeah, You know, uh, people may not know this, but Arnie Stock used to be a city employee. He's a former yeah, city employee I of City of Las out. Vegas. He's just got a heart of gold. He does. He really does. And he started off with Veterans Village 1, as you mentioned, then 2, 3, 4, and now he's helping people who are homeless Everyone. in general. Exactly. Everyone. Exactly. And that opportunity to have him help you to get on your feet and then it changes your life yeah and so again he's a great community partner and i'm always uh looking for ways that we can help yeah absolutely i think too you hit this on the head the properties that he has uh are, are nice. They're, really they're, nice they're not uh what people would think of as exactly low housing exactly and he makes sure that they stay that way mm -hmm. and and his organization is just amazing yeah, yeah. he takes care of the folks too not only does he provide a place for them to live, but if they have other needs, he has those wraparound services that really protect them as well. So we're lucky to have yeah, him. Absolutely, here in Las Vegas. yeah, he is a gem. And then, Councilwoman, uh, during the holidays too, you know, we wanted to make sure not only did we celebrate Christmas, but uh, we also celebrated Hanukkah. And uh, you had the menorah lighting out at the Badlands Clubhouse that took place on December twelfth. Yeah, and there you are. Uh, helping to, uh, uh, Councilwoman Fiore is yes, with you. Yes, we yeah. are great yeah. supporters of the Jewish community, and they invited us to come and light the menorah. And, yeah, this is right in smack dab in the middle of Ward 2, and it was just nice to really see all the people come out. During the pandemic, it was freezing cold, yeah. uh, and yeah. they all lined up in their cars to watch the menorah being lit. Yeah, tell everybody about that, Councilwoman. Again, differently uh, done than, than in the past. Do. Yeah, you know, yeah. instead of standing yeah. around the menorah, everybody was... In back. cars. Yeah, yeah. And there were even folks that were way back that you're wondering how they could even see, but they wanted to make sure that they shared that moment. Mm -hmm. And then we had, of course, the... Um, the dancers they always have the dancing dreidels yes dancing yeah, 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 yeah. and it was just fun <laughs> it was a lot of fun councilwoman did you experience it seemed to me that maybe because it was the pandemic that at least in the neighborhood uh, where i live it seemed like more people decorated their homes <gasps> both for yes. hanukkah oh, and yes. for christmas oh, yes. than in years past oh, yes. uh, a lot more holiday cheer at least least displayed on people's homes with lights and whatnot this time around. We saw um, maybe 80% of our neighborhood with lights up outside. S same here. And that's very unusual. I exactly. Same here. We uh, said the same exact thing when uh, we were driving yep. through neighborhoods. People really decorated. They wanted that holiday mm -hmm. spirit during this time of the pandemic, and it was beautiful. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was very beautiful. So uh, my family were saying, boy, we hope everybody keeps it up next year, you know, in 2021, so. because it was a nice addition. It, was it really nice. was. So, And Councilwoman, you also posted this on Facebook. You said, it was a tough choice, 
but my pick for the 2020 Councilwoman's Choice Trophy was Mike and Kristen Scanlon for their boat Santa Slay. Now, this is part of the annual Festival of Lights out at the lakes. And folks, if you're not familiar, they always have a boat decorating contest. A lot of pressure on the councilwoman because she gives out one of the awards for best boat. And so she has, she has to pick after all those boats are out there. She has to decide who's got the best one. We have to do an award for everyone. Uh, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, second place, third place, all the way to yeah, however yeah, many boats there are. We got, yeah. I have to tell you, they're all so incredible. It's phenomenal. Yeah. They, they decorate to the hilt. I mean, they decorate these boats. And even though there was no one there to watch, we did um, videotape it yep. through Facebook so that people could see those beautiful boats because people come out there. They surely do. Normally, uh, there's exactly. like hundreds of people exactly. out there watching this. And this is a tradition that goes back many, many years You were now. telling yeah. me all yeah. the way back mm -hmm. to um, oh, Councilman Wolf Exactly, yeah. but even before that, yeah. Oh. So 20, 25 years they've been doing yeah. this out there. It's, so it's, It was absolutely amazing those boats and it's always uh, a challenge because it's at night and it's december and you're on the water and so it gets a little chilly out it's there extra cold you know? this year. <laughs> so i think some of those folks were saying that uh you know since we're doing it virtually this year that's a good thing because i'm warm now as opposed to having I'm to in put my home exactly exactly right <laughs> So, uh, well, thanks for doing that. And again, it's a lot of pressure on you because the boats are really well decorated. Oh, they're amazing. And they kind of up their game every year. Every I've noticed year. Uh, used to be a few lights around the rails. Now you saw what we're talking about. I mean, they go all out. And they all go all I out. I know. And then so you have every, to pick. It's like, yeah. oh, my gosh, which one am I going to go with here? So I'll just pick you. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. And then, uh, Councilwoman, uh, you had this on Facebook as well. You said, uh, thank you to the wonderful ladies of the Oakmont of West Las Vegas for knitting these wonderful scarves and hats for donation to those in need. I look forward to getting these distributed to those who can use them this winter. A great group. I'm not familiar with this group, though, the Oakmont of West Las Vegas. Senior Living. Yeah. Ah. Senior ah. Living. And what I can say about them is that they are always doing great things in the community. They collect toys. For tots, they uh, do. They um, during the pandemic, they actually uh, had a day where they had law enforcement come out and pick up lunch. Oh, really? I mean, they've done some amazing things. They're real big community outreach. Um, they do a lot of uh, community service, uh. and they had some women there who knew how to knit, and they decided that they were gonna knit scarves and hats for the needy, for people who need it during the winter. And then their director contacted me as the councilwoman and said, we know that you'll, a lot of pressure again. Yeah, I know. You'll find you'll a place You'll figure out for where these, these should yes, go. But yeah. we're gonna donate them to you. And they were beautiful Looks scarves. like you guys chose Safe we Nest. We chose yeah, Safe Nest yeah. because Safe Nest um, has a lot of women and children in need, and mm -hmm. we felt that they would appreciate those scars, and, and they did. It was amazing. Councilman, tell everyone, if they're not familiar, what Safe Nest, what the organization, what their primary mission is. Their primary mission is women and children, mm -hmm. um, to give them a place to stay in transition, maybe if they're abused mm -hmm. or right. um, whatever else, but they are a great organization. They've been around for a long time. They have. They have. And it's one of those organizations, once again, when you're looking to contribute or donate, check them out. Yeah, they, uh, they uh, do a wonderful job here in the community. And during the holidays, you know, imagine being in that situation and kind of feeling like, what's next for me, my children? And so uh, to have the Safe Nest organization there. And then to know that people care, the ladies over at uh, Oakmont, uh, Oakmont, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then through the council office, that's that was great. That was a good a, We a love good thing. facilitating yeah. these yeah. different things for people because, you know, a lot of times people do have ideas that they want to contribute something, but they don't really know right, how to Right, exactly. We hear facilitate. that all the time. We, we do. And you know what? Before the end of the show, we'll have Councilwoman's contact information. We want to reach out to her. If you want to volunteer, help clean up a park, uh, if you maybe have, uh, you're, you're have a scout troop, that you have some projects that you need uh, to work for a merit badge, contact us because the councilwoman always knows where the need is in the community. She can plug you in on some really good projects. So, 
And then, Councilwoman, I think a lot of people may not know this, but Las Vegas is a sister city of Ansan, South Korea, believe that's it or correct. not. Yeah, that's correct. For many, right. many years. Exactly, many years going Goes back. Goes back to Mayor Jan Jones. Exactly. And you posted this on Facebook. You said, I want to thank Mr. Lee, the Korean American Association, and the city of Ansan, South Korea, for putting together a very generous donation of masks to the city of Las Vegas. And, of course, uh, Mr. Lee from Lee's Discount Liquor uh, is of Korean descent. And he and the group from Ansan partnered so that masks from South Korea were sent to Las Vegas, That's right? That's right. Yeah, they yeah. involved the Korean Business Association mm -hmm. yeah. here of Las Vegas. And they donated thousands of masks for, again, for us to facilitate where they were needed. So yeah. we were able to give them to a lot of the senior homes in Ward 2. Mm -hmm. And then Councilwoman Diaz was in need for her senior assisted Ward three. living uh, yeah. in Ward 3. Mm -hmm. So I partnered uh, with her and brought we brought the mask uh, to one of her facilities. Great. And, uh, you know, just everybody giving during this time. It just was uh, a year of... The pandemic, but we saw so much good in people. It's so true. And this this good reached literally halfway around the world because these masks came from uh, Ansan, South Korea. And again, they donated them here because they're our sister city yeah, in, yeah. in Korea. Sister it, Park. Yeah, it, yeah. It, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We have Ansan Sister City Park, too, which is in Ward right. 2. That's correct. So, uh, yeah. And, and they obviously didn't forget us at this time of year either, uh, sending those masks. And then again you figured out where the need is and, and to get the stuff out there. So good stuff all the way around. And then Councilwoman, you didn't forget the city employees. This is always nice, especially when you come with the, the, the goodies you bring. They're always really good. <laughs> you, you remember our city employees. Because you know what, folks, I, I know as part of our job in government is to keep going uh, no matter what's happening. But we certainly had to do that this year. And you just had a big thank you for all the employees uh, with cookies and donuts and all the things that uh, well, I just we have just to love say, to have I this time here. I appreciate so much what everybody's done here. Uh, when we have issues, my office, my office certainly does appreciate everyone at the city when we have an issue, a constituent concern. I've never seen a large group of people work so well together to get things done. Yeah, and We've got a lot of compliments from constituents on how when they call in with a problem or an issue and how quickly it's taken care of. That's, that's the idea, right? That's what we're that trying is. to do here. That's what we're supposed to do, exactly. but it doesn't always happen that no, way. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, but we certainly try to hold a different standard here at the city to be uh, responsive. Uh, and Councilman, I know you and your team answered so many questions that uh, to constituents that really didn't have anything directly to do with the city. That's correct. Unemployment benefits, uh, whatever it might have been. Those are the state or it might have been the county or it might have been a different jurisdiction but you and your team help point people into the right direction it's like these are the folks that uh, this is who you, you need to contact to, to kind of get whatever taken care of taken care of so it's been an interesting year and yeah. and uh, so many city employees uh, well we couldn't take a break uh, we had to just keep going because the community needed us at that point and so it's nice of you to remember uh, it's been a long it was a long tough year and so many of the, the people you remembered uh, weren't able to take a break at all through all of this. And yeah, so, sure. um, yeah, nice to be remembered through all of that for sure. The least we could do, right? Right, right, right for sure, for sure. Uh, and then, Councilwoman, this is really cool. I want you, we want to introduce everyone to a very special young lady uh, in Ward 2. This is the Miss Queen in Action. She's the national winner of this pageant. Now, you have to tell everybody about this young lady, who she is, and, and, and why she's so special. 12 years old. When you talk to her, she'll say, when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> so you can only imagine when this young woman started, you know, because she's 12 years old. She already has over 1,200 hours of community That's service. Incredible. Um, all she wants to do is see a smile on somebody's place or light up their day. Uh, I've not seen a lot of young folks 12 years old that actually think like that. So I hope that she can be a mentor to many others. Yeah. But uh, she came to my office, she wanted to meet me. Um, she had met me when we did the flag in, you know, where we placed the flags. Oh on, yes, yes. Uh, for a Veterans Day, for Veterans right? Yeah, Day. or Memorial Day, one of the two. Yeah, yeah or both. Yeah, it was Maybe Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she actually um, met me and wanted to come to the office and meet me, you know, in person and talk to me. 
and I was so impressed by her that we did a video. And if you have not seen that video, go to my Facebook page or my Instagram and you will see a video of this young woman and she just inspires people by at her young age all that she has done and yeah. one of her favorite uh, Charities is the Ronald McDonald House. No kidding. Uh, yeah, and during Thanksgiving, what do you think she did? She helped serve the homeless. Wow. And uh, just uh, a great human being, so. So at 1,200 hours at 12 years old, that means for every year of her life, she's had 1,000 hours of community service that she's yeah, contributed. 100 hours, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Uh, 100, 100 hours. Yeah. So, that's, that's, um, yeah. That's a lot. 100 hours, so that that's still a lot for yeah. somebody that young. And we know she didn't start no, not yeah. at, not at so, three. So I, I assume, yeah. assuming, yeah, yeah, it was going to be a little older before yeah. she started volunteering her yeah. time. So, so it, just very inspiring, and I wanted uh, people out there to hear her story, so they could get inspired. And uh, amazing mother, amazing mother that I'm sure um, has, you know, helped with a lot of this community yeah. service. Yeah, so. it's it's the upbringing, right? Yeah. So. Uh, folks, you have to go check out, uh, go to Councilwoman's uh, Facebook page, check out the video. Uh, it'll inspire, make you feel good, warm your heart a little bit. So there's a lot of good still uh, out there in the world. And we've Sometimes seen a we, lot of it right, now, right? right? I mean, we, we've talked about that, yeah. but, you know, the, people look at, oh, this pandemic, and it's been such a horrible year, yeah, but right, right. really, let's look at all the good that we've seen. Absolutely, and there are a lot of really good people out there. Sometimes we just focus on all the negative things happening, but uh, there's so many good people that uh, are all, sure. there are neighbors and, and friends and all around us, so good stuff. And Councilwoman, speaking of helping get the word out, uh, to our neighbors and friends. You do a feature that we want to let everybody know about, uh, remind them, uh, Small Business Saturday. And this is where you feature small businesses within Ward 2. I love this segment because I've learned so much because <laughs> I didn't know some of these places are literally, you know, a mile from my house. I didn't even know where, where they were or what they were doing. But if you want to be a, a part of that segment, reach out to the Councilwoman's office here if you're a small business owner. She will feature you on her segment. Uh, these are, come each week, uh, appropriately enough, on Saturday, Small Business Saturday. And you've featured everything from restaurants to dry cleaners to you name it. Uh, and all, these are all businesses right in our own backyard. And there's more to come because we've been, there's been a lot of businesses that have survived the pandemic that have reached out to us and we are filming weekly mm -hmm. and we're so excited to continue this program because it really brings awareness to the ward and uh, we just filmed a business this morning that you know I had never it's right in my backyard and I yeah. didn't know about um, so I'm I'm really excited to keep this program going and the businesses are so grateful because they know yeah. that it is my priority to make sure that I let the community know about all the wonderful businesses in Ward 2. Yeah. And, and of course, small business, such a mainstay of our economy. It is. And, uh, but, I, but again, small business doesn't generally have the big advertising budgets. And so they rely a lot on word of mouth or on social media. And, and so you helping get the word out that they're there. I love it because like I say, I've learned so much. Uh, and again, these are businesses that are close to where I live. And so it's like, yeah. you gotta go check that out. You know, yeah. I didn't know it was there. So again, tune in for Small Business Saturday. It's uh, on Councilwoman's uh, social media sites. And also too, again, if you're a business out there, a business owner, and you'd like to be featured, then reach out to the office. We'll tell you how to do that. Or you saw the number on the screen, we'll tell you how to do it one more time before the end of the program. So, all right, Councilwoman, good job out there. Appropriately enough, we always want to hear from you. So if you have something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Victoria Seaman, you can find her on Facebook and Twitter. You can also contact the Councilwoman just by picking up the phone, 702-229-2420. Or you can send her an email. Her address is ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov. She or one of her great staff will get right back to you and uh, help you out with whatever you need going on. And again, small business owners, hey, this is your opportunity to, to get the word out on what you do. So. Okay. Well, great job. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Uh, Happy we'll New Year to you <laughs> and we'll your family. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you back here in six weeks with another update from Ward 2. 
uh, and in the meantime, uh, stay safe out there, okay? You as well. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Well, don't miss our next show beginning on February 4th with Ward 5 City Councilman Cedric Creer. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around. Please stay safe out there.